Welcome back. Welcome back to the Eye on College Basketball Podcast here on CBS Sports Network. I am Matt Norlander. Shouts to all of our listeners who made sure to tune into the to the video version there. There's GP as well. GP, you got me. I presume you have me. Yes, buddy. You're here. Uh, big news today. Texas Tech um, former coach Chris Beard, also the former coach at the University of Texas, has reportedly met with Ole Miss officials. He has been described as a leading candidate to replace Kermit Davis as coach of the Rebels. Uh, do you think Chris Beard is going to be an SEC coach within the next couple of weeks? I think it's possible. I, I can confirm that. So here's what we have right now. Uh, Chris Beard is one of a handful of candidates being vetted right now for the Ole Miss job. Uh, he, he did meet in recent days in person with uh, people associated with hiring him at Ole Miss. But as it was ex described to me, there are still a few significant hurdles that need to be cleared uh, among those in legal in nature. And so while I think it is very possible that Mississippi eventually hires Chris Beard, um, I don't think that is something that will be happening in the next 12 hours. And it might even take a couple of days. And there is the potential. The way I'm understanding the situation right now, Parrish, is all it takes is either the president of the university or someone on the university's legal counsel to see something in this process that makes them pause and say, you know what? We're out. That that scenario is still on the table, given Beard's background. And, you know, they are going to make if they're going to make this higher, it's going to come with controversy. And if you're going to get to that point, you're going to check every single avenue and line you can possibly check. The charges of the domestic violence charge against Beard was dropped in February. His fiance did recant some of her statement from the 911 call she made in early December. So there's a lot surrounding this story. But my understanding is right now he is the lead candidate. We will see if he continues to be the lead candidate and is indeed offered that job, GP, at some point in the next 24, 48 hours. I talked to somebody um, uh, close to the Ole Miss program about this, and I was just sort of picking their brain about the thought process because obviously there is no scenario where this happens without controversy. And the point this person made to me is that, listen, GP, um, we, we can do this, and yeah, we're going to get some bad public relations you know, for a day or two, and we're going to have to answer some tough questions. But ultimately, when all that is over, what we're going to have is one of the best college basketball coaches in the country at the University of Mississippi. And I think part of that is true. I, I do believe Chris Beard is one of the best college basketball coaches in the country. He did literally unprecedented things at Little Rock. He did unprecedented things at Texas Tech. And he was on the verge of maybe winning a national championship, certainly competing for one at Texas um, when this domestic incident um, de derailed his career. Uh, no fault of anybody other than himself. Um, the part I disagree with is that this is just going to be a one-day thing or a two-day thing. And that's something that Ole Miss officials are going to have to figure out if they're comfortable with it. Because this isn't going to be um, you know, students chanting at you for half of a season. Every time you play a road game, the term woman beater or some form of it is going to be chanted, whether that's fair or not. And so I am somebody who fundamentally believes in second chances, and I'm not about to write a column insisting Chris Beard should never, ever, ever coach at the Division I level again. But whatever school decides to hire him, and in this case it appears it might be Ole Miss, they have to recognize exactly what it is they're dealing with. If they get good really quickly under Chris Beard, nobody's going to go to Oxford and just write a story strictly about how awesome this is. They're going to write a story about how we got here. This is not going away anytime soon. And, you know, if you're Ole Miss, you've got to be you got to be sure you're comfortable with that. Yeah, and we'll see if it can get there. Now, by nature of this story leaking and, you know, how did the story leak? You know, did, did Ole Miss want this out? The, the team plays tonight, GP. Like, they're playing in the conference tournament. It is a bit awkward, to be honest. They, they did fire Kermit Davis. They do have an interim head coach. But normally when stuff like this gets out, a team's season has been over and that hasn't happened yet which also leads me to believe that there's the potential this getting out was not 
I can understand why a, a cynic might say, okay, Ole Miss is just going to wait and see what the blowback is on this and have that help them inform their decision. There could be part of that. I don't think that was the intention here. And for the adults in the room that have to make this decision and potentially put their careers on the line, because if this goes the wrong way, like you, CP, you know, like if, if you hire Chris Beard and something remotely close to this ever happens again, it's a stain on everyone's resume that was associated with this hire. So the adults in the room are going to take this stuff, um, uh, again, line by line, when they're drafting up a contract, if it's even offered to them, because there are there are so many things to account for. And they if they're going to offer Chris Beard the job, they are, in essence, saying even if they protect themselves contractually, they, they are saying we believe that this man is never going to have an incident like this again, where he would um, bring shame upon himself or this university. And that's cool. If it gets there, it's going to be comfortable with it. Right now, it's the only program out there that's known to be at least flirting with the idea of of hiring Chris Beard. And it's interesting because sort of at the same time, we've got controversy at one of Chris Beard's former stops, uh, Texas Tech. As you know, Mark Adams, the head coach, was suspended um, earlier in the week after the school said he made racially insensitive comments um, to at least one player. Nobody I've talked to, and I know nobody you've talked to, expects Mark Adams to return as Texas Tech's coach. So obviously Texas Tech is, it appears, going to be having to uh, look for a full-time replacement, just like Texas is going to have to look for a full-time replacement, just like Ole Miss is now looking for a full-time replacement. Uh, do you have a sense for what direction uh, Texas Tech could turn once the Mark Adams uh, dismissal is official. Not for sure, but let me just throw two names out at you and tell the audience why that what they've got in common. What about Paul Mills at Oral Roberts? And what about Grant McCaslin at North Texas? Why would those two they, to you make sense? They both, just like Jerome Tang at Kansas State, once worked for Scott Drew and have strong ties, relationships, and history in the state of Texas. That's correct. And so with Mills now making a second tournament run in three years uh, and doing a really, really good job, McCaslin has turned down opportunities. He's at North Texas. North, Te North Texas could wind up beating FAU in the CUSA tournament and get to the tournament again for the second time in three years. Um, if there is a, a coaching change at Tech GP, those two would be among, in my opinion, those two should be among the four to six guys that should get the most serious looks because they're both ready. There's no doubt about it. Both those coaches are ready to coach at the high major level and they know they've coached in the area. They've recruited the area. So, and I, and I got to believe both are taking that job. I would, I would think both would take that job if offered. So that's just a couple of names to look out for. Again, hasn't the change hasn't happened yet, but we do have a weird thing with this carousel here in that you mentioned Texas and Texas tech. How about longtime rivals, Syracuse and Georgetown? Those jobs both might open yeah. as well. Yeah. The coaching carousel. It, uh, overshadows the championship week and first week of the NCAA tournament uh, just about every single year. It doesn't appear that this year is going to be any exception. When we come back, Jerry Palm, our bracket expert, is going to join us. What exactly does news of Jalen Clark's injury at UCLA season ending do for UCLA seating? That's among the things we'll ask Jerry Palm next here on the Ion College Basketball Podcast on CBS Sports Network. <laughs> 